The Cold War finished more than three decades ago. Many Americans thought it also brought an end to the spy games that defined that era. But a new book shows the spies were there all along, living among us. It says Russian spying on Moscow's perceived enemies in the West never really ended. Instead, it has just evolved and intensified. Russians Among Us, Sleeper Cells, Ghost Stories, and The Hunt for Putin Spies covers the espionage conducted by Russia and the United States since the 1990s through the 2016 election. Author Gordon Carrera is also security correspondent at our partners, the BBC. Gordon, good morning. This is a fascinating book. Thank you. Because it basically says we took our eye off the ball. Absolutely. Uh, while Russia was patiently and aggressively spying on the West, the West thought the Cold War was over. There was no need to worry about this. And I really start the book in 2010 when there was this bust by the FBI of a group of Russian deep cover spies called yeah. illegals. Uh, and it was seen as a kind of weird throwback, a, a, a joke when they were swapped for some other Russians in jail. People didn't take it seriously. But actually, it was a sign that Russia had not given up its methods, some of which came from the Cold War, but some of which were new and evolving. But let's talk about those deep, those illegals in deep cover, because when one of them was arrested, her name was Cindy, Cindy Murphy. Yeah. Richard and Cindy Murphy were American names. They said, it can't be Cindy. She likes to garden. Look at her hydrangeas. <laughs> I mean, they were doing normal, everyday stuff, which was so fascinating to that, me. That's right. They were like li what? living in the suburbs. She was doing taxes for people. Yes. Uh, she and the others had, though, spent years, decades, building their cover as Americans, posing as Americans when they were, in fact, Russians. They'd learned to live, to sleep, to dream in another language, uh, to, to hide every aspect of their Russian past. And they would have children, and too, Gordon. And they had Gordon. children. Wow. I mean, and what about the, when they were arrested? I remember one, one scene that stood, stood out to me. The FBI knew the kids' nicknames. They knew the code to the garages. And the, the kids are, like, our parents are spies? Yeah, I mean, so the FBI had been watching this group for years. They knew they were Russian spies, but the children of these spies Did not thought know. they were Americans. Yeah. They thought they were Americans, and then one day the FBI is in the house, and they're told, nope, you're Russians, and your parents are spies. The FBI broke this case because they had a critical informant inside the upper levels uh, of Russian mm -hmm. intelligence. That's right, and that's one of the things I go into detail, the new detail in the book is about this agent called Alexander Pataev, who was recruited here in New York in 1999 by the FBI and then run jointly with the CIA in Moscow for a decade. And it was the fact when he became nervous that the Russians might be on to him, he felt he had to get out in 2010. And then that brought this whole operation to a close. Where's you he today? Well, he is in hiding because absolutely there is a risk to his life. Wow. I mean, it, it, one of the people swapped in 2010 for these illegals was a man called Sergei Skripal, oh, who was yes. targeted for assassination with nerve agent in Britain two years ago. That gives you some idea how seriously Putin took this episode. Putin and how he was furious to that these illegals were outed. He, I was told he was so furious, he threw his papers up in the air when, when he found out they'd been arrested. He was so angry because it, it cut to his identity. He's a former KGB officer. Yeah. He sees himself as a master spy who'd put an end to Russia's humiliation. And then suddenly here are his spies, the spies he's so proud of, being arrested and shown up. And so that was a really important moment in changing the way Putin saw his relationship with the West. We've seen the Russians attack people in England, former agents. Do you think they'd ever do it here? I've spoken to U.S. intelligence officials who certainly think it's possible. A few years ago, they thought it would never happen. The Russians wouldn't risk it. Now some even say, well, we're preparing for that day when, not if, it happens. They've seen Russia become more aggressive, more brazen, more willing to take risks than it was in the past, using new methods, cyber illegals, who, who create false identities in days online, but also willing to use violence in a way they weren't really willing to use in the past. Gordon, what's the end game here for Putin and Russia? I think he wants to hold on to power and he believes that he wants to keep the West off balance. And he's using his spies to basically divide us, to keep us off balance, to give himself more room for manoeuvre and to keep his hold on power in Russia. And what that's his central aim. What motivates people to turn on their own country, though, Gordon? That's a good question. I, I think I it's different. Understand. It's a really yeah. complicated one. I mean, of course, sometimes it's money. Sometimes right. it's ideology. Sometimes it's just a sense of grievance. It's really complicated. And talking... To, to spies, you just get a sense it's a very human, individual story. And that's what I wanted to capture in the book you sometimes. Is about, it's about the human stories, about why people get involved in spying and what it's like and what it's like to have a family and be right. a spy. Yeah, you did Gordon, it very well. Gordon Carrera, thank you so much. Russians Among Us is on sale today.